Good morning, everybody. We're getting ready to head out on our first Key West Adventure Day, and we have planned today. We have uh, Blue Heaven for breakfast. Then we go to the Ernest Hemingway House and Museum. Then we go to the Truman's Little White House. Then we go to the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, man, because we're just going to park and, like, walk to all these places. And I'm like, oh, man, it's going to be a lot of walking. Then I realized it was literally just one trip around Epcot. That's the distance that we're walking today. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Walking through Key West on our way to breakfast. Little tiny sidewalk. Random pirate up there. This is where we're going. We're trying to find the main entrance to Blue Heaven, which I think is right here. Oh, no. There's some, some action happening over here with these roosters. Here's what we got. I got the, um, it's called the rooster special. And it's just like a regular breakfast, eggs, potatoes, bacon, and pancakes. Jen got the BLT Benedict, which is bacon, lobster, and tomato Benedict. It looks pretty darn good. Fun story about this restaurant is that it has changed hands so many times. It used to be a brothel. It used to be a place where you could get liquor during the prohibition. And Hemingway lives like two blocks that away, or used to live two blocks that way. And I guess there was like boxing matches that happened in here and he would referee the boxing matches. So this is a place that Hemingway would come and hang out. After we're done here, we're gonna go see Hemingway's house. And there's a picture of Hemingway. And he's gonna box in the backyard here where we were just eating. Oh, it's not looking so good. Hopefully this blows through quick and we don't have to like duck and cover from the rain. We don't have very far to go. We just got a few blocks. Let's see what we can do without getting rained on. I'm kind of in love with just walking around down here. Like it's so cool looking and like islandy. Here we are at Hemingway's house. We're gonna head inside now. We're kind of looking around the house right now, wandering. They're gonna start a tour in like nine minutes. He said that there are 53 cats around. You can, you can pet them, right? Uh, people were petting them, yeah. You just can't pick them up. Yeah, oh, we, I think we went the wrong way because I don't see anything yet. I see the pool, which is nice. Oh, it feels so nice out right now. Yeah, it's about to rain. Okay, I found a cat. There's one right here. I found another cat. They all have six toes. This is a very nice pool. I would totally love to have this pool. There's no shallow one. Oh, I, guess I think the shallow, shallow end's like in the middle. I always like this, like how would you like to have that house right there? That was just like, where do you live? You know, behind Hemingway. Ooh, look at that lighthouse right there. That's cool. Oh, this cat's gonna get something. What's he gonna get? What are you gonna get, cat? Maybe not anything? But here's Hemingway's house. My name's Tyler, I'll be your tour guide here for the next 30 minutes or so. And before I get into earnest X, Y, or cats, I'll address that man very quickly. Asa Tiff built this home in 1851. That man was a shipwrecker. If your boat hit a reef outside the Keys in the 1850s, he saw you, got you your cargo, he brought you back to this little island, then he made a very solid attempt to sell your stuff straight back to you. <laughs> At about four times the price. And I gotta point something out on a serious note. It was very successful. It made him one of the richest men in the country. And there's 31 states that gave Key West more millionaires per capita than any other city in the country. And I understand you come to Key West, that image gets here <laughs> immediately. Hey, being the older guy with a gray beard, but when he came here, 28 years old. He was a young man. Now, I came with a second wife, Pauline. That next to him is Senior Gregorio Fuentes, a Cuban gentleman, who became the first mate, cook, and more important than that, the drinking buddy. <laughs> On that boat, the Pilar. Now, that boat was custom made for him in 1934 in the Brooklyn shipyards. It was the first thing to follow his fortune. But the reason I bring up the fishing buddy, you might have guessed. He shaped the character of Santiago, the fisherman novel, Old Man in the Sea. What I like to stress in 30 minutes, although the books say fiction, Real stuff, real people that did happen. Now we're going to step across the hall. I'm going to show you the gallery of wives. Now I do like to point out Ernest Hemingway is a native of Illinois, born in Oak Park, July 21st, 1899. His first job, a reporter for the local newspaper. 
That's how he met Hadley. They married at 21 by 23 a son. His name was John. He fathered Margo and Mariel Hemingway. You might have seen him in a movie or two. So that's their grandmother. Now in the 1920s, writers and artists, they flocked to Paris. Hadley went with Hemingway with Hadley, her good friend. What she thought was a friend. Pauline Pfeiffer. Now Hadley found out those two, she quickly divorced, she'd stay in Paris. These two moved here in 1931, and a lot of folks love to make this assumption. He bought this home with his fortune. He didn't. He was young and broke when he came here. It was a gift from her uncle. This home was set abandoned 42 years. Her uncle got it for $8,000. It's not too shabby. More important than his kids here, what his last son is holding. Snowball with six toed. Back in the day, an extra digit feline was a good luck trick. Well, the merchant cat. He was accident prone, a little superstitious. He liked that he had good luck charms running around. By the 1930s, spaying neuter was not an easy task. That cat left, there's over 90 of them. Nine years. This guy just went from a nobody to an international superstar. By 37, most of these novels completed. They would start becoming well-known movies with huge names. Reporters flocked to this island to meet this Ernest Hemingway guy for the first time. And Martha Gellhorn, a freelance journalist, put a little black dress on, strutted the sloppy joes, and she waited. Rumor had it, he couldn't resist the interview. Now, a year and a half of interviews, Pauline was already fed up. She walked towards the courthouse and she filed for divorce. Those two didn't waste any time. They shut off to Cuba. They enjoyed a fabulous marriage for almost two or three weeks. But a year later, in London, he met a writer for Time Magazine, Mary Welsh. That's the woman he should have been with from the start. He had common ground with her, but more importantly, unlike those three, she drank scotch. She was perfect. 16 years would be the longest lasting. I will talk about her later. I need you to know this. Everything on the ground in the home is original. It was here when he's here. It all has a story. What's on the walls is Domi. I like to stress that portrait. That's how this island remembers Henry. Anyway, he was young, prime of his life. You know, when he left locals he knew more for boxing and fishing than for any book or any movie. Real quick, the only wife that lived here, Pauline, fashion editor for Vogue. Wherever she went, a chandelier came back. One was hand blown glass from the island of Murano. The other one in the hallway here, Moorish Crystal from Spain. And the ceilings. I kept only a year old. She's our newest addition. Back in the day, you probably know, they did not make big beds, period. Two twins ordered out of the Sears catalog that came down on the railroad. The reason I mention a bed, the headboard, is from the Royal Monastery in Spain. That's an 18th century hand carved piece that was a gate for almost 60 years. See the hinges on it? The right hand man put a hinge on the other side so it could sit the way it does. I will point out that chandelier, this French crystal that was picked up in Paris. There's a matching one in that bathroom. I like to tell you guys, because of shipwrecking, Key West had so much money, electricity came in 1903. Everything you see in this home with light bulbs that slid up, welled up in the 30s. I want everyone to see the scar. He got a drink in at a bar in Perry. Couldn't bear the toilet wasn't flushing. In his day, it was in fact a pool chain. His solution to a non-flushing toilet, you throw a weight on it. It was a skylight, that's why it wasn't flushing. Two stories cracked him. Nine stitches later, you'll see the scar. Keep this in mind before I mention depression or suicide to you. Nine documented concussions in his life. Three times more than NFL players they're worried about. He survived two plane crashes in Africa. The same week on a second safari, fractured his skull, broke his back. And he boxed John Sullivan, saw what he would call palms up box, but he was 12 to he was 55 years old. And he was not good at it. <laughs> but as he would tell you, a man cannot be defeated, only destroyed. License to Kill is a Timothy Dalton film. This is the balcony he jumped off. Go back, watch it. You'll see a lot of pieces of kiosk and very familiar. All the cats have like little houses. Oh, there's a little cat cemetery right here. There's a little kitty cat house that looks like the Hemingway house. So this is a urinal that he pulled out of Sloppy Joe's bar that is now the cat drinking fountain because he put enough money into Sloppy Joe's that he deserved to take a part of it, so he took the toilet. <laughs> this is Hemingway's studio, and it's all original in here. I just like that there's a cat there. Like, in his writing studio, still a cat, sleeping on the ground. And then in here, here's his bathroom, having a seat next to Hemingway's pool. You guys see all those people over there on the other side of the road taking pictures of stuff? 
That is mile zero right there. The furthest point of highway in the United States. And they're taking a picture next to the sign. Roosters and doves. So we stopped off at the car, picked up our umbrellas because we think it's gonna rain, dropped off the big camera, got the little camera. Now we are heading to uh, the Truman House, the little white house. Look at this tree right here. This thing's impressive. This is where we're gonna try to go. So there are two rooms that are not on the tour and these are free to the public. And these are them, it's these two right here. I like that there's a cutout of Truman right there. That's pretty awesome. Oh, and there's his shirt. I like it. I'd wear this shirt. It's called the Key West Uniform. But because this is still an active presidential site, I can't film any inside of it. It was a pretty neat tour all in all. It was a very interesting house. I think one of my most favorite parts of the tour was seeing the, um, the decorating because a lot of it was uh, either original or they remanufactured the fabric or the wallpaper to make it look like the original stuff. So that was really cool. Yeah, um, it was really neat to see. It was because when it was redecorated after he was re-elected president, the Navy came in and documented and took pictures of everything. When they were restoring it to make it look like it did when he was here, mm -hmm. uh, they were able to find all of the exact same stuff or recreate the exact same stuff. Yeah, it was really cool. Down to the wallpaper and the wall color. Yeah. Pretty neat. I thought it was interesting seeing like the bedrooms that they stayed in because there was the belief at the time that the president and the first lady weren't supposed to sleep in the same room because when anything happened in the middle of the night and they needed to wake up the president, they didn't want to wake up the first lady too. Actually, it's right there. Like that's where his bedroom was. So it was a pretty neat tour. I highly recommend it if you guys come down here to Key West and you're interested in presidential history. Here's where we're going next, Mel Fisher's Maritime Museum. So now we're in the Mel Fisher Museum. He found a lot of shipwrecks and gold. He actually found the Atosha. The silver bar that was found in the Atosha. Oh, the macaroni, that thing's huge. This is the actual anchor from the Atosha. This one was broken during the hurricane that sunk the ship. So these cannons, they were strapped down really good inside of the ships, but sometimes during rough seas, they would break loose. And that's where we get the term loose cannon because they would be a like loose cannon going around everywhere and like running into people. So this was called a poison cup. And basically you see that little setting inside there. It would hold a gallstone from like a sheep or a goat. And it was believed that the gallstone would suck poison out of whatever the poison was in. The hair and calcium deposit, that would absorb arsenic arsenic yeah and so the little setting down there would be hidden by wine so nobody would know that this was protected from poison and they said that sometimes it worked the atosha had over a thousand of these silver bars on it there's 27 of them here in the museum i thought that this was really interesting because you guys see this cross it was meant for the pope at the time but on the back one of the inscriptions is this is saint anthony the patron saint of finding lost things, which is pretty ironic because all of this stuff was lost at sea. It said one of the biggest surprises on the Atosha was the emeralds because they weren't on the manifest. That one is 77 carats. Wow, I, I wish you could see the color in person. They yeah. look like, I don't know how to explain it, like kryptonite. Yeah. That's what they look like. This is where we were last night watching the sunset. We watched it just around the corner right there. But look, here's a cruise ship in port right now, taking up the whole view. Quick, somebody go ask that chicken why he's crossing the road. Oh, he turned around and changed his mind. Walking down Duval Street now, just in case you guys wanted to know what it's like, walking down Duval Street. Here's the Key West Hard Rock Cafe. It's pretty much just a house. And then right next door is a historic property called the Key West Women's Club, Martin Helling's house. It's like an old St. Paul's Church, Episcopal Church right here on Duval Street. Directly across the street from the church is a Build-A-Bear workshop. The building right here is called the Oldest Schoolhouse. It's kind of neat. It's believed to be one of the oldest buildings in Key West. Yeah. It's a huge three-story building. We're inside of Captain Tony's. Right now. Kind of hard to tell. But yeah, there it is. So the idea is to make the quarter into the grouper's mouth. Go ahead, give it a try. Oh. Uh oh. So I totally wasn't filming, but I threw the quarter up. Wait, wait, there's, wait. There's Mr. Lightman Hyde right there, he too. He was by the way. holding my drink. I was trying to get my drink out of his hand while before he like flipped it up. And I was throwing and I, it. I went like this. Put your hand up. I went like that. And he totally made it in with my assistance. Made it in. So I have now stood at the curb of Captain Tony's backwards, threw a quarter 
and went into that grouper's mouth backwards with, after with Jen the hit help me. Of Jen. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna live forever. Here's Key West's old city hall. This is pretty awesome. Going to the Conquer Public Seafood Company for dinner tonight. There it is. That's where we're gonna eat. The appetizers we got are Royal Reds shrimp. And I guess they are just found a couple of years ago. Now they're a specialty here in Key West. Well, they're just found around here a couple years ago, yes, right? in the Marquesas. And it was about 10 years ago they were found off the Gulf Coast. Oh. But it's very, these are relatively new species of shrimp that they found. And they're deep water, which makes them sweet. Jen just reminded me that I didn't film anything. It's not shown by Jen's but rather by mine, where I've eaten all of my burger. And then some chicken sandwiches. Yeah, with, what is it called? Juju, Juju slather, Ooh. the best. So it's like a Caribbean style? Like a Caribbean style sauce. We're heading down to a place called the Chart Room. Look at this sunset that's happening right now. We're heading into the Chart Room Bar. You guys have ever heard the song, A Pirate Looks at 40 by Jimmy Buffett. That was written about the bartender here at the Chart Room. We stepped into Sloppy Joe's for one second just to say that we came into it. Here's everybody outside of Captain Tony's trying to get their quarters into the mouth of the fish. And we already did it. We did it! And they don't even know. Nobody's done it so far. They're not even standing in the street. All right, it's kind of hard to see, but... We got passed by the Goblin King up there. The guy dressed full out David Bowie, walking through the streets of Key West. Stopping by the Green Parrot Bar for our last stop of the night. And thus, tomorrow brings us to our last full day of adventures in Key West. And then the following day, we're driving back home. So we need to get our rest, because tomorrow, we're out on the water all day. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.